All right, everybody, welcome to the second edition of NCB Live. We didn't get canceled yet. Um, I know last time we yeah. went over, um, but we're still here. We're going to try to do this again. Hopefully, we make this a little shorter. Um, the format's going to be pretty similar. Uh, we're just going to cover some of the topics um, pretty much of the day and stuff that's kind of piquing our interest. Um, and once again, this is Derek Hernandez. We actually got the fancy uh, little bar here with my name on it, with my Twitter handle there. Um, we also got Greg on the show again. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Yeah, uh, I didn't get kicked out just yet. So yeah, I'm, I'm like I'm liking our new fancy graphics we got going on. We're ready to rock and roll. Oh yeah, I'm excited, and I'm actually I was gonna try to dabble around in some uh, some radio noises. Um, this is something I put together here. We might use here later on, but we'll see. Let me know what you guys think about this. What am I now in a place to be? You kicking it down to the side of the MCB. Sounds legit. So and, you know, I don't know what they're going to think about it, but I, I like it. I, I mean, anything that mentions us, that, that's cool. I'm good with that. Exactly. So I'm over here trying to mess around with drops and stuff like that. But um, kind of on to the, the topics of the day. Um, basically, we're going to do um, – I guess we'll just start off right, the, right off the bat here. Kobe is on Twitter. That just blew up like crazy today. I think he already has like half a million followers within a couple hours here. Um, I'm just happy that this took away from the whole Kanye Kim baby thing. Um, <laughs> what are your thoughts on this, uh, Greg? I mean, I know you're one of the biggest Kobe fans I know, but no, oh, yeah. So, so I'm. It's funny to me because you know if we had gotten Kobe on Twitter like a long time ago, like Twitter was around when he first came into the league, no one would. I mean, people would. Right, when he had the fro, like, people would care, but he probably wouldn't say anything that interesting. Now that he's older and he doesn't really care what he says anymore, man, he's had some really good quotes recently. So I'm hoping he's like that on Twitter. I'm hoping we get that Kobe. Uh, I think he's at that point where he's just over it. I mean, he's he's built up enough, enough equity. He, he doesn't care right now, to be honest with you. Uh, he, really, he really shouldn't. Like, <laughs> I mean, ugh. I'm just waiting to go just blast his teammates. I mean, I, that's what I'm waiting for. But I, oh, you know, I, you know it's coming. I'm sure Paul Gasol's tried to get him to follow him already. He probably blocked him. Blocked. Right, blocked. he probably blocked him. But the one thing I do know is I bet you Vanessa has his Twitter password. <laughs> I, I, all right. I saw somebody on Twitter just say, like, all of his DMs go straight to her. But uh, <laughs> Right. He's not going to get any DMs. His DM creep game will not be good. It's, it's not going down. I wonder if he has to confer with Vanessa about you know half of the tweets. She gets she gets like seventy characters. Okay? <laughs> nice. uh, I don't I don't know, but I mean, I, I don't even, I haven't even seen if he's even uh, tweeted anything yet. But I think he'll never retweet. I mean, that's kind of passing. passing no, he, yeah, he's yeah, he's not doing that. Like it's funny because I've been it's funny because if people didn't know that I was a Kobe fan, I've been I've been going at him kind of hard about it during the day. Like I, he he's never gonna follow anybody. Like all these pathetic people begging him to follow them. Like that's not gonna happen. Like he probably has blocked his own teammates. Like there's no way that he's gonna follow Parker. us. Like he's not gonna follow like random people. Like I, I bet you he went out of his way to find Smush Parker on there and just like. Ether him on the on the Twitter verse. <laughs> probably that'd probably be the only be he'll follow just Smush Parker. I, I, I'm waiting for the whole Shaq Kobe uh, Twitter battle. Oh, that that would have been nice. That'd have been nice to have. You know, when they were both on the same team, that'd have been good. But even if we get it, you know, in Shaq's retirement, that'd still be nice. <laughs> Kobe has my tweet taste. Or I don't know, I don't <laughs> no, know. something like that's that. Messed up. That's bad memories, right there. <laughs> I wish I could pull up that YouTube video right now, but um, I don't know. I don't, that's Mr. Andy's social on the social network there. I don't, I don't know. I guess we'll see how this turns out, see how long he's on there. But um, Mamba on the Twitter. I'm surprised he didn't get a, a you know, Black Mamba 81 or something on his, on his Twitter handle. But He should have. He should have got. He should have put something a little bit better on that avatar, though. It should have been uh, that little photo shoot, one of the Photoshops. With the hat, oh, with the I think I, I tweeted out that uh, yeah, he's the one. You see the one where uh, he's sitting in the car with the guys from Boys in the Hood. That's the oh, one yeah. that I think he should go that, with. You know, I think that uh, or, or something from that uh, music video he had with like Brian McKnight and uh, Vanessa Williams. I think. No, nice. they were all the, those were gold, man. Those things were awesome. Oh yeah, I, I did a little post on uh, NBA rappers uh, then and now, and he he was matched up, I think, with uh, who was he matched up with? It wasn't. It wasn't Shaq. That was too obvious. But you'd have to look that up on the site. But I was watching those videos. I'm like, what are you doing, young Kobe? Uh, he had the fro still, trying to you know be all badass and terrible. Uh, it wasn't as bad as Tony Parker's rap video, but uh, that's kind of a different another topic here. 
Um, speaking of Kobe and in, in the NBA, um, I know we ended our last show. Um, it's kind of ranting on what we're looking forward to, and I, and I got up at the end of the show showing you my uh, my vintage Christian Leitner Dream Team 12th Man shirt. Uh, I know you were dogging me about that, Greg, but kind of in that same spirit here, I'm rocking a uh, Dream Team 2 Penny Hardaway jersey right now, and I actually had to put on a sweatshirt or a hoodie over this because it was too damn tight. I don't know if you can see that over this here, but... That's it. That is it. I will. T I would turn around right now, but this is. I can't get this off right now. It's like super tight on me. Yeah, um, if, but if I'm rocking around, that right now, and it kind of got me thinking. That would be a bad look. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and and kind of in that same spirit, I was I was just looking around. Uh, he was like, "What other ridiculous clothing is out there?" Um, so I just got on. E Uh, we're just going to go over some ridiculous things I found on eBay just within literally about 10 minutes of just looking around. So um, first thing first here, a um, little, little old school reference here. We got the O.J. Simpson trading card. Um, there's a card on the front with his actual, you know, him playing. Um, at the bottom there's a mug shot. Um, I don't really know what else needs to be said about this, but I mean the juice is loose on that one, man. That that's a that's a really interesting one. I bet you whoever would have that would never be able to show it to OJ, but yeah, you that's a good one. Oh yeah, and I think it, this might even be OJ that's selling this. He needs money right now, so that is true. All right, so move on to the next one here. I got the uh, Mario Manningham bobblehead, and the reason I picked this one. That is a terrible Photoshop job. I'm sure this is not how it actually looks. Who are they fooling with this? This is ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> when Photoshop goes wrong. I, I guess. This is it right here. Um, this one, who in their right mind would even own this and buy this? I, yeah, that one. I don't even know. What, what would you do? You would probably just let it get sacked. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm surprised it's in one piece. You'll probably get it in a couple pieces here. <laughs> Uh, let's look at what we got next here. All right, I'm gonna dog on him right now. I'm gonna say I enjoy his work on Unite, that show, um, on ESPNU. But what the hell is this? Like, who thought there was a market for this? Really? I mean, how, I can't believe they're charging that much. Uh, and you probably still gotta pay shipping and handling. But I don't know. I mean, I might just rock this just to see the looks I would get. Um, but I, I have no idea why this is even out there. Um, let's see what we got next. This isn't really funny, um, but I just wanted to talk about this team here, this old Rockets Clutch City team. I was just kind of sitting there thinking about who was actually on that roster. Mm -hmm. um, think about the clutch players they had on that team. Robert Ory, who everybody you know knows from his Laker days and even with the Spurs, but he started with this Rockets team right. doing the exact same thing there. Um, you had Mario Ellie. Uh, that guy broke my heart. I was, I was a Suns fan back in the day. I was, I'm a big Charles Barkley fan. Um, that whole kiss of death that he had back in the day, that just destroyed me. Um, Kenny the Jet Smith was on that team. He was clutch. I mean, he's he's a great commentator now, but he was clutch back then. Uh, Mad Max, uh, Vernon Maxwell. Vernon Maxwell. That's a, that's one of my all-time favorite, like, not superstar players. <laughs> I like Vernon Maxwell, man. I mean, just think about that roster there. I mean, they if you go back and watch all those games, they, I mean, they'd go down three one in the series. They'd you know fall behind and big in the second half, but they would somehow, with the King the Dream, of course, we can't forget about him. He was kind of the the, the driver of all this. Um, they would somehow figure out a way to win the game. And um, and, it, and think about this too. They were one of the first NBA teams to actually use that whole small ball. I mean, they had a dominant center, but you know, use the three ball as, as to their advantage and, and use it as a lethal weapon. Um, if you think about the NBA today, this is. They were doing that back then. Yeah, I man. I think that that Rockets team is interesting about them. Now that they came up, is that people I think dismissed them a little too quickly because Jordan wasn't around when they won those back-to-back -back titles. Uh -huh. um, but but those, those Rockets team were really good. Those those were really great teams. Uh, they they really need to get more credit. They were great teams. Oh yeah, I, I'd love to see. I mean, if we can go back in time to see, you know, if Jordan didn't retire, um, those Bulls teams versus these Rockets teams it would have been great. Yep. All right. Let's see. The answer, I don't know why this is – he has a football jersey out there. Um, 
<laughs> Speaking of people that might need some money, that might be him selling that too. But you know, AI was a he was a baller in uh, in high school, right? Like so the legend of AI is that he was a great like high school football player as oh, well, right? Wasn't he? Uh, it was a QB, wasn't he? I think so. I, I think he was, he was a QB. Yeah. Uh, my my wife would love this one. I know she's a big uh, Iverson fan. But uh, let's see here. This was just funny to me. This is an actual hoodie or shirt. This is like a print people are selling. Um, <laughs> as an NBA, I'm an NBA junkie, and I love the past. I would love to have this shirt. I don't. I mean, I mean, I was, I, you know, that's the first thing I thought when I saw this um, was I would love to have this. I actually, this is the one thing I probably would get. <laughs> yeah, this is great. And for 18 bucks too, that's pretty cheap. So, um, let's see what we got next here. Old Johnny Most, um, great announcer back in the day. I'm not going to dispute that, but why the hell is this shirt even made? <laughs> I, I got nothing for that, man. I, I can picture who would wear this. Um, it wouldn't be – they wouldn't look like us, I don't think, but um, – <laughs> No, no, they wouldn't. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Um, let's see here. Birdman. Living out in Denver, I was like – I saw this come across. I'm like, what happened to this guy? I mean, after that whole uh, – you got accused of some sort of – Child abduction or something like that. Child pornography. He just kind is, of he, is he still in the league? I don't know. I, I have not seen him. I know he was one of the more popular guys out here, um, out in Denver. But I think he's a free agent. I mean, I know he is on NBA 2K13. I know that's not the uh, the official word. On it, but I mean, you know, they're they're pretty uh, legit over there with uh, with uh, 2K Sports. But I don't. He, you know, he's finally kind of like the the not good basketball version of Josh Hamilton to me. <laughs> Like that's that's what I think about when I think about the bird man for some strange reason. It is because of the whole like the drug pass him trying to get clean. Yeah, I think that they, they when I think of one, I think of the other. I, and whenever I think of Birdman, other than his you know bird call and all his tattoos and crazy stuff, is that dunk contest when he had like fifty misses in a row? That was just terrible. Yeah, that was terrible. And I'm sure Kenny Smith said the the, the contest was back right after he made one, but it's always back. Yeah, all right. Looks like we're running out of these here. Oh, Ron Artest. And this is really not funny by itself. Um, <laughs> but this is a youth jersey. I'm not sure if you really want to buy your kid a Ron Artest Pacers jersey, um, given that when he was with the Pacers, he had that malice at the Palace. There are, there's kids in Indianapolis that wouldn't want this jersey. Like, why would anybody <laughs> want this jersey? Like, 20 bucks. Here. $20. I don't know if I'd spend that much on it. But uh, let's see what we got left here. Oh, this one might you might you'll probably go off on this one. Out of all the players that they've had on their teams, one, this is not really an NBA Finals shirt, it's a Western Conference champion shirt. And for the Lakers, it's kind of funny for them to have a shirt like that. Um, and why is it Derek Fisher's face? Yeah, I don't understand why we why anybody is putting Derek Fisher's face on a shirt. I mean, I, I'm sure I actually you know what, there's probably some ladies out there that might wear a Derek <laughs> Fisher's shirt. He was always popular out there in L.A. I mean, I know he's a family man and all, but, yeah, yeah. whatever. He was still in the NBA. So, yeah, they, they would rock it. But other than that, I don't know what the market is for the Derek Fisher yeah, shirt. I, I mean, I could see the Clippers doing something if they won their first uh, you know, Western Conference or something, having a conference championship shirt. But I thought that was just kind of funny. Um, I think we might be on our last two here. And I think these are – I think this is kind of a forgotten era in basketball is the Starbury era. <laughs> when he was with the Knicks, um, he actually did have his own clothing line um, out there. And I thought, I might even just buy these shoes and wear them in my rec league just to be funny. But I was just about to say, I would probably just like to be funny because those Starberry shoes were always cheap. That was the thing with those. Um, so, yeah, I, those are they're not bad. They're not as bad as some of the most re some of the more recent sneakers that we see, man. I'd, I'd wear those before I wear some of those LeBrons, I'll tell you that. Uh, I don't know if it's just because we're getting old, but I don't understand some of the shoes. Um, Westbrook was wearing some ridiculous ones for Christmas, I think, and I'm like... Wasn't he wearing the the, the, uh, the Jordans? Like, it was one of the Jordans, the ones that yeah. kind of look like the high-top shoe. Yeah, they look kind of a blue jeans type of looking shoe, like aqua blue Jordans. Yeah, I think that's one of those signs that we're getting old. But yeah, I don't know about those. And kind of, and we got a little. You can get a Starbury jersey to match. So. Oh yeah, man! You you would be all you need is a headband <laughs> for the rec lead or one one of the arm sleeves, and you'd be good to go. 
Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, that was pretty much it. I, I think I might make this a kind of a recurring feature on the site. Is you know, I'll go over each month and just kind of browse through eBay listings and kind of comment on the funniest ones. So if you guys see anything, be sure to send that my way. So um, that was it for this little segment. Um, we'll kind of get back to the show at hand here. Um, can you see me? Am I here? You back? You back? All right. So we got that. Um, next up. I, I, we were kind of talking amongst ourselves on the staff, um, and, and one of our writers, Brian Gatula, is actually going to do a, a write-up about this. But you know, obviously during Bowl Week and and, and, and everything that's going on in NFL playoffs, we're we're watching a lot of sports, and obviously for us, we're watching that twenty-four-seven, anyways. But um, you know, just terrible commercials that are on constantly during sporting events. Um, you know, we did a formal an informal poll on our on our Twitter feed, and um, you know, AT and T is the kind of the biggest culprit right now. Yeah, um, you know they're they're hello. I, I mean, I want to say goodbye to that commercial. It's just straight up terrible. Um, and, and can you imagine Bo Pelini going into that commercial at the very end saying hello? I I don't know. I mean, it'd be weird. But he might um, need to say hello to some more recruits. But that's a different topic. Yeah, I don't even know. I don't want to get into that. But um, <laughs> I mean, AT and T is the biggest culprit. I mean, they're little kid commercials. I think there's a lot of love hate for that. Uh, one of yeah. our staff members, Tony. Um, said it was sacrilege that we kind of dissed on those little kids, but I swear <laughs> to God, if I saw that two laser kid and that the little wires they got kid, I would yeah, they would, <laughs> they would get spanked by me. Um, I, I don't know, I just not a fan of that. Um, I, I kind of like the new one where that kid's doing two different things and moving his head all weird. Uh, I don't know, that one's kind of funny, but um, I don't know what kind of sticks out to you, Greg. I know Brian will cover this during on his write up, but. Yeah, the uh, the Bob Stoops one, it, I, when we put it out there, the Bob Stoops one comes to mind first. That one needs to go just because it seems like it's been around the longest. Mm -hmm. um, the, the one, that one jumps out, but the one that sticks out to me, I'll give you a, a pretty good one that I'm starting to get sick of, and I know people love it, is the one with Cam Newton. I think it's for the NFL, like the NFL play where the kid's warming up his arm. That one is hilarious. I'll never. I'm a little biased. I'm, 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 I'm like I said in the last show. I'm like one of three Carolina Panther fans. Um, I just love that commercial. I mean, it's kind of funny to watch Cam make fun of himself a little bit. He's, he's kind of full of himself. But I can see they show that a lot, though. They show um, it a ton. So yes, I like the commercial too. I like the kid, man. I'm glad that he's going to be Cam's mom's favorite player. I'm happy that he's warming up <laughs> his arm and he's eating his vegetables and exercising. But it's about time that we uh, find a new one. Uh, that was not it's, like I said though it's not bad it's just uh, that one can be slowed down on the on the play yeah, and I think that's the biggest problem is uh, they overshow these and I understand you know sponsors of the games and you're, if you're watching Tostitas Fiesta Bowl you're gonna see a lot of that uh, but you know if you're watching NFL games it's kind of the same stuff over and over um, NBA Network for some reason has the worst commercials it's like watching infomercials all the time on the NBA. yeah NBA TV is is really bad at that but you know what I just thought about too is so why we might get so the same commercials so especially like once they resonate with people like that cam one and they just show them over and over again sporting events are one of those times where people advertisers actually get people to watch commercials like you might get up and go grab another beer or get a snack or whatever um, but you're not DVR and um, sporting events. So, you know, if I'm watching, you know, oh, yeah, you're right. something else, some network shows, and I'm fast-forwarding through it, so they may be able to, you know, get more bang for their buck that way. That might be why. That's a great point. That's a great point. And I think um, one of the better ones that I saw was the um, the KFC commercial. I kind of posted this on my Facebook last night, and, and this is the wrestling fan coming out again for me. But that chick that says, uh, she goes, uh, I think, Game day bucket go boom, and she does kind of like this at the very yeah. end. I lost my mind when I saw, like, holy shit. Yeah, yeah, she actually, mind, but, um, she, yeah, she thought, actually hit him with the DX. I, know, I thought that was awesome. Uh, some of my some of my followers uh, thought she had too much of an attitude. I don't think you would – that wouldn't be somebody you would date probably. Uh, she'd be kind of cool to hang out with, probably one of the guys. Um, yeah. Could be a little bitchy as well, but uh, – Yeah, I hey, put, her, put her in the friend zone. <laughs> Exactly, uh, but that's one of my favorite ones, um, and I know Brian will cover most of this later in terms of the ones we don't like. Yeah, um, and it's time to another one. I'm I'm tired of too is get rid of the discount double check. That one has had its time, and it's time for that to go. Oh yeah, and it's and it's really weird that everybody says Aaron Rodgers is a great actor. I mean, what is he actually doing in these commercials to make you think he's that? playing himself and doing his move? Like, yeah, I don't know. He's ironically know. standing there. And that Pizza Hut one isn't much better um, that he's in. 
And I think I think the guy that's in that is the Tiny Hands Burger King guy. And for some reason, he's the Pizza Hut guy now. I think he's, really? hand, he's eating big boxes of pizza now. But that's one of my pet peeves of commercials is the re- recurring actors that are on every single commercial but for different products. Right. Uh, yeah, it just annoys me. I don't know why it is. I'm the only one. I, I don't know if I'm the only one that just notices that, but it just annoys the heck out of me. So I think that was it for commercials. Like I said, look out for Brian's posts on the site. I think he might be having that up today. Um, it should be posted on NoCoastBias.com. So check that out there. Um, the last topic, at least scheduled wise, that we have is uh, Chip Kelly in the NFL. Uh, I know that's kind of the, one of the hottest debates right now. Is is he gonna? succeed? Is, is his system going to work? What's his system going to be? Uh, you know, I was just watching uh, SVP and Rosillo this morning, and, and they kind of went off on that, and they were kind of, they were thinking, they were leaning towards more he was going to succeed, but what are, what are your thoughts on that, Greg? Yeah, I think I'm a big, big, big Chip Kelly fan. Like, uh, we talked last night jokingly about how, you know, we hope in a weird way that he fails so that he can come to the Huskers. Um, I did shed a tear just even talking about that. But uh, him being in the NFL right now, I actually think that he's going to succeed. I think that he is the coach that, you know, offensive guys come to to tweak their offense. Bill Belichick sought him out to Mm -hmm. improve the Patriots' offense. That's a big deal. And what that also tells me is is that his offense is able to be adaptable. He's able to adapt it to do different things with different personnel. And just because we see him running this ultra-fast – um, spread run offense, and that's what it is. People need to get that straight. It's a run offense. It's not a pass offense. Mm-hmm. Um, just because he runs that up-tempo offense at Oregon doesn't mean that that is necessarily what will be in the NFL. So if he goes to the Browns, he might be able to do a running attack based off of Trent, Trent Richardson and his skills, which really slows the game down. So, yeah, I'm a big Chip Kelly fan. I think he'll do well. Oh, yeah, and I think it's just – he's a smart enough guy where he's not just going to go in there and just – try to run exactly what it runs in Oregon. Um, I do think he's going to need a younger team. I mean, you're not going to go to a veteran-laden team and try to do what he does, and his system's kind of a, a change. Um, but, I, you know, I, I might be a little biased again. I think him going to Carolina would be perfect. You have the ultimate weapon at, at, in his type of attack, other than maybe RG3. Right. Um, you know, you start from scratch there. You gotta, you're got you going to have a younger team. I mean, Steve Smith's not getting any younger. Uh, you're going to replace pretty much all of those offensive, I guess at least the – the wide receivers, and you got like 10 running backs on that team, and you know he, he likes to use that too. Um, but I, I think it's going to be about the fit, the roster. I think he can't go to a veteran-laden team. He's got to go to a younger team, I think. Kind of let him in charge of personnel as well. I think that's going to be key. Um, but I, I think he's going to succeed. I, I think, you know, it's – the I always complain about this in the NFL. You know, they, they ran the Wildcat a couple years ago, and people were mind-blown. Like, oh, we've never seen this before. I'm like – I watch college football, and this has been happening for years. Right. Uh, Why didn't you just turn the TV on on Saturday? You would have saw the same thing. Or the zone read. Like, oh, it's RG3 and Shanahan are, like, innovative right now. I'm like, this has been going on for a long, long time. Uh, and the NFL, I think it's, they're getting away from it now. It was just hiring retreads. Um, I'm looking at you, Norb Turner. Um, but they're starting to get more out. They're trying to think outside the box now, you know, reaching out to, you know, Jim Harbaugh, even though his his style of play is more NFL. Um Friendly, um, you know, you got you're, you're reaching out to college guys, more innovators now. I think I think he could succeed. I'm actually hoping he succeeds to kind of stop this. Everybody runs the same play in the NFL thing. Right. I think that I agree with that. I think that that's a good point that, you know, the NFL now is, is trying to innovate a little bit more. And I think seeing that you can be successful on offense with different, you know, styles of offense um, has really helped that come along. You know, and I, I agree with you completely, though, that if he if, if Chip can actually be patient enough to wait and see what happens in Carolina – um, and I don't know what they're doing dragging their feet, you know, whether or not they're going to get rid of Ron Rivera or not. They need to just come out and say what they're going to do officially. Mm-hmm. Uh, because if he did go to Carolina, man, look out with that, man. Because Cam Newton, for as much as people were getting on him early in the year for his struggles and the league had figured him out, they didn't figure him out, man. Look at those numbers for the full season. He had another great year. Yeah, I think that was more of just his attitude that the people didn't like. Um, yeah, people uh, just don't like him. No, they don't. Um, the whole Scam Newton thing, and, and but if you look at their record at the second half of the season, they they got all the way up to seven and nine. Right. I told you that without actually because nobody pays attention to them. Um, and I was actually kind of upset that they were winning these games because it was doing nothing rather than ruining their draft stock. Um, they went seven and nine. Um, they, it's not like they were just flat out terrible this year. 
Um, and that you could be that you could argue that maybe Cam was doing better because the lights were off him now, and you know they were playing with nothing to lose. But right. I mean, they won those games. I mean, it's the NFL; it's not easy to win games. Yeah, but yeah, I agree with that. I thought that too, though, with them winning games and ruining the draft stock. But uh, yeah, they definitely played really well the second half, which actually might hurt your chances of now getting Chip Kelly because they may go ahead and keep the coach uh, because they won some games. Uh, we'll see. I mean, I, at the same time, I like Ron Rivera. Uh, it's not often you get a, a Mexican or Hispanic coach. So, I mean, for one of those, you know, you know, you know, like you know the, the black and brown don't get a lot of love for those NFL oh. coaching jobs. We could do a whole show on that. Exactly. And I don't want to get into that. And uh, <laughs> but we can get Rob Parker out here. It'll be a little bit like the <laughs> Right. Um, but anyways, just say his little his lower third though could just say cornball brother. <laughs> I'll create it for him. I'll, I'll create it on lower third. So um, that was pretty much all the topics that we had. Was there anything you wanted to just kind of randomly shoot off of, Greg? Or no, I mean that's what we're doing. I mean, we're getting close to the national championship game. We got a, a lot of a lot of buzz getting going for that. People have completely forgotten about the Cotton Bowl tonight because of that. But uh, we're getting ready for that. Getting ready for playoffs this weekend. I'm looking forward to it all. I might, uh, given recent events, I might pick OU and Notre Dame. Just kind of see how the SEC's performed. I I, I, I kind of lean the same way, to be honest. I've been I've been picking Notre Dame for probably the last three weeks, yeah. um, but I I hadn't really been asked that much about OU because people literally. My dad called me earlier today and had forgot that they were playing. Um, so yeah, but I told him I was like, yeah, I think OU's gonna win. Because uh, I, I don't think people are fearing SEC defenses right now. No, and I think – I mean, they're still technically a Big 12 team. I, I, could, I still consider a and a Big 12 team. It's not like they're yeah, full. Just because you're in the SEC for one year doesn't mean, you know, <laughs> you're yeah. now magically anointed one of those SEC too. It, it's strange. It's strange. I, I think that's one of the topics that I didn't really get brought up in SEC land is that they basically had an SEC – or a Big 12 team, a pass-happy Big 12 team that don't play defense come in there and do pretty well. Uh, we have a guy win the Heisman in your league. That's supposed to be the baddest league in the land, but um, that never gets talked about for some reason. No, uh, we can't. We can't bring that up. They'll, they'll end us right now if we bring that up. Oh yeah, and, and plus uh, us being uh, fans of the Big Ten, it really doesn't give us any. Uh, no, we don't. We don't have a lot of cred on that one. <laughs> no, no, fire away. We don't care. We we've heard everything. So all right, I can take it. I've heard it long enough. <laughs> All right, all right. Yeah, I really don't have anything else to shoot off of. Um, I'm pretty sure we'll do a couple more as I know um, a couple more of these shows. I know work's going to start getting ridiculous for me, but um, I want to try to shoot to do a, uh, a Royal Rumble preview. I'll try to get Jason Mann off WrestleSpective.com to kind of join us. I know I did a uh, podcast with him a few, uh, a few months back, but uh, Rumble's coming up. The Rock's supposed to return. Um, we'll see how that goes. I'll kind of talk about all that stuff. I know, Greg, you kind of follow it loosely, so I don't know if you – you really want to dive into that some of that stuff, but we'll see how that how that goes. <laughs> I know what we'll, one show I'll be I'll be here with you guys for sure. Is we'll we'll go, come back and kind of chop up the national championship. Maybe we'll throw in a couple surprise guests for you guys on that one. But yeah, I definitely want to depending on who wins because that'll depend on who wants to appear. Oh I'm yeah, sure. oh yeah. We uh, I'm sure if uh, the Domers won, we'd have plenty of guests on this show. Right. Uh, we'll see we'll how just that have goes. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, we're going to try to uh, you know, shoot these out more often and kind of keep them short like we did today. Um, we're going to try to have some fans be a, a part of the show and get your, make this kind of a mailbag as well. So if you have any uh, questions or, uh, or, or comments or anything like that, feel free to comment on our YouTube page. Uh, hit us up on our website, nocoastbias.com. And you can also email us at ncbsports at nocoastbias.com. And we'll check out your emails there. So. Um, that was it. I thought this was a little more clean and, and not as raw as the first show, but uh, we'll keep doing these for you guys as long as there is a uh, somewhat positive review for these. So um, I don't have anything else to say, so everybody, till next time. Later, everybody.